Hi there and welcome back to another NJS instructional video. In this video, I'm going to review this new ScanGauge 3 vehicle monitoring and diagnostic system just released by ScanGauge Australia. We will unbox it, go through the installation, explore the features and functionality of this product and test it out. Now this is the latest iteration from ScanGauge with a number of visual and hardware improvements over the ScanGauge 2 which itself was and still is a fantastic product. Now like the ScanGauge 2, this is a vehicle monitoring and diagnostic system. So it's a very powerful tool which provides real-time information and data. Now the four major functions of the ScanGauge 3 are to monitor, measure, track and diagnose vehicle vitals. And we will cover these functions in more depth throughout this video. Now at the time of this video, this product retails for around $415 and is available for purchase from ScanGauge Australia's website, link in the video description below. So let's unbox this ScanGauge 3 product, see what comes supplied, install it and test it out. So this is our cable which will connect to the scan gauge and our OBD port. This looks like our window mount. So the new um, scan gauge already comes with the window mount. So you can put it on your windscreen and have really good visual access. So it's all um, positive. Got our quick start guide. And we've also got some further instructions regarding the mounting there. A bit of 3M tape, which will go with those instructions. And then we've got the actual scan gauge in here. So quite a bigger screen than the previous scan gauge, so that's where I'll connection point will go to the OBD connector and here's our scan gauge too so just to give you a bit of a, a visual representation of the two so the windscreen mount has a magnetic base so these two steel plates over here with a 3m side to it if you just place it on there it actually sticks nice and firm um, and the same with the circular one like that. Now we're just going to um, use this additional tape that's come with it just to give it a nice firm um, mount on the scan gauge itself as well. Like that. Like that. And according to the instructions, place them on top of each other, press firmly until they stick. This will give us a nice bond. Now the next step is to remove the red film and place it on the back of the scan gauge. Now most likely I'll probably place it towards the left, which will equate to the right of the actual screen. That way our window mount can be over here and because we're going to be putting it in the right hand corner of the windscreen, um, it'll just give us a little bit more flexibility. So I'll do that. I'll just use this alcohol wipe as well just to clean the back face and then go about sticking it together. Get that nice and clean, let it dry. So now that the back of our scan gauge has dried, we're just going to take the red film off this magnetic mount and pop it in position. Now you do want to be careful that you don't cover the actual connection. So press firmly on that, and the longer you leave it, the better the bond will be. So give it at least a few minutes, if not five or more. So while that's bonding, I'm just going to grab our OBD cable that we have over here. Now, it looks almost like an Ethernet cable. This side connects directly into the back of the scan gauge, and this is the OBD2 connection point. So it's a matter of locating it for your particular vehicle. Um, usually it's on the driver's side, probably in the footwell somewhere. So I'll show you where it is on this particular vehicle. Um, and then it's just a matter of routing your cable however you wish to route it. So the OBD port on this particular vehicle is just in the footwell on the driver's side. So that's our port there. So it's just a matter of getting our scan gauge cable, which we have here, 
and then just plugging it in place there and just push firmly in and that side is now connected and the other side of the cable it just simply plugs in to the back of the scan gauge like that now that our steel plate has finished bonding i've just removed the cable just to make it a little bit easier for our first time installation we'll grab our windscreen mount you can see that it just picks up like that being magnetic and we'll position this on the windscreen and then plug our cable back in so we've got our scan gauge over here and we're just ready to position it onto the windscreen like that and the good thing is we can just pivot and adjust it accordingly now we've got our scan gauge connected to the windscreen mount and that's a really nice visual location so when you're driving you can also see what's happening on the scan gauge i'm just going to relocate it for video purposes and we'll go through the features and the functions of this scan gauge now installation of the scan gauge 3 was fairly straightforward as you saw it's just a matter of bonding that steel plate to the back of the unit connecting our obd2 port cable to the back of the scan gauge and then positioning the suction cup to a location where the scan gauge 3 suits you as a driver and once the scan gauge 3 was connected and the vehicle's in ignition it'll power up and start communicating with the vehicle's ecu now what i really like with the scan gauge 3 product is that it's retained its cabled connection to the obd2 port now you can purchase some cheaper bluetooth obd connectors which connect to your smartphone but that's actually caused issues for me with my vehicles and actually triggered engine codes. So that's as simple as the installation really is. There's no tools, there's no batteries. Um, the scan gauge is actually powered up by the vehicle itself. Now it can take a bit of time for the first time to actually connect up to the ECU. Um, scan gauge say about 60 seconds, but as you saw, it was almost instant for us. So now that we're up and running, let's go through some of the functions and features of this new scan gauge. So let's go through our initial setup with the scan gauge. So we're just going to go to more and set up. And look, we can adjust the colors if we wish. There's a whole heap of colors that we can select. Um, I'm just going to stick with the blue for now. You can also adjust the brightness, which is very handy when you're driving in the night. And you can also enter in your vehicle details, so like your tank size. So for example, the vehicle that we have here has an 80 litre tank. Engine size is actually three litres. Fuel type is diesel. Now we're just gonna go over to units and make sure our units are showing correct. So um, yes, temperature in Celsius, distance in kilometres, volume in litres. Pressure I'm gonna leave as PSI and currency in dollar. Um, liters per hundred kilometers we'll just switch that to on I'm just going to go over to adjust over here so this will allow us to adjust or calibrate rather our speed for example um, fuel cutoff fuel flow horsepower so anything that needs to be calibrated um, can be done so through here even the speaker volume can be adjusted now one of the new features of the scan gauge 3 compared to the previous one is it's actually got audible alarms so if we set any threshold um, which is cross for example or you're over that particular threshold you can actually have an audible alarm come at you whether it's speed or rpm or whatever it might be so there's a whole lot of things that we can adjust in here now being a new vehicle and a new um, install with the scan gauge I don't know or I'm not aware if there's any um, calibration that needs to be done. Um, if you're in a four-wheel drive, for example, you've got bigger tyres, you might want to adjust your speed here if you know what the true speed of the vehicle is. Um, so you can do that. Now, under advance, we can adjust some more values over here. Uh, I'm not going to change the OBD2 mode because I know it's reading. You can change the update or the refresh rate, so data communicating from ECU to the scan gauge. You can make that fast normal or slow scan gauge recommend normal um, which we'll leave it as that sleep event so in the event where say the engine's off so engine speed is zero um, we can put it to sleep we can also do a wi-fi update which is really handy and um, we can also do a reset to default so we'll just go back to display and we can just say use default and go apply to menu and then click on that square slash circle button and it'll take you back to the main menu 
Now something I really like about the scan gauge products is the ability to scan. So if the engine light comes on or you've got any diagnostic trouble codes, um, you can just simply click on this scan function and you'll see that it's pretty much checked the ECU. There's no stored codes, there's no active codes, so the engine light shouldn't be on. What we'll do a little bit later is we'll actually trigger um, an engine light to come on, so we'll pull apart something in the engine bay and we'll do a scan and just see if it picks up. Now something also quite nifty is this pending and you'll see that we've actually got the VIN come up in the bottom right hand side and we've also got the engine light off here which is also true on the vehicle's dash. So we can check the VIN, in this case it's already pulled it up so we'll go back press our home button um, and that's a super powerful tool. So if you're out in the bush somewhere, you're stranded somewhere, you can do a simple scan and you've got a good idea um, if it's engine related, you've got a good idea of what's going wrong. So now let's use our gauge function and you'll see that we've got a number of preset gauges. We've got three different windows we can actually use there and we can also configure um, what we want to display. Now to configure what's displayed it's fairly straightforward just select what you want to adjust so in this case I just selected um, that top button there and you can say for example go boost pressure so I'm just going to accelerate the engine and just see you can see the boost pressure um, building up there. Um, let's make some more adjustments so say ambient temp there select um, coolant one temp select trip distance and say current gear for example trip time here we're gonna say EGTs which is really important um, in a DPF or DPD fitted vehicle um, engine oil temp be interesting if it shows that you can also say engine load which I find very important especially when towing engine RPM is also a good one now some of these functions may or may not be available for your vehicle so it really depends on what the manufacturer is willing to give over and be accessible so for example current gear is zero if I go now into reverse or neutral it's actually not doing anything. So some information is available from the ECU. It all depends on whether the manufacturer is willing to give access for systems like this to use it. So for example current gear, I'm just going to change that to maybe um, battery voltage which is quite handy. Let's see where that is. Yeah, go to select. So you'll see we've got 13.9 volts there, engine load around 19 or 20 percent, engine RPM, so let's build up our engine RPM. You can see our EGTs are raising, our coolant temp as well. Regen is off, which is fine. Engine oil temp is zero, that's because it's not actually reading any um, engine oil temperature. So let's change that to maybe speed. So it's really handy to know what's actually happening with the engine and to be able to monitor that. So that's something I find really important um, when you're towing or full driving or whatever it is that you might be doing. Um, it's always good to know what's actually happening with the engine and the vehicle itself. Now something interesting that I've picked up here which on the scan gauge 2 I actually had to do an X gauge command but the coolant 1 temp so that's specific to this vehicle and so is the EGT, so the exhaust gas temperatures. And I haven't actually loaded any X gauge commands onto this scan gauge, but it's already picked them up. So that's quite a nice feature. Now under the settings, you can also obviously change the display settings, but also under here, the layout and the monitors as well. So if I want to put any alarms, for example, I can um, select something like the alarm. So say, um, coolant one temp, select. If it's above oh, maybe 105 degrees Celsius, warn me. 
if for example the battery voltage is above 16 volts please warn me so you can set up a whole heap of whatever is accessible you can set up as a, an alarm so engine load engine torque whatever it might be um, regen type select is active no, let me know so very handy let's say even we can use not just monitoring um, functions we can also use trip functions and also if we want to set up some X gauge or if we have set up X gauge commands and we can also use those for alarm and trigger points now another nice feature with the scan gauge product is the ability to measure your trip details so if we click on trip we'll go into this menu here and you'll see that we've got a whole heap of information that's available to us so things like fuel use the distance the time it took us average speed maximum speed um, even things like maximum coolant temperature and so forth so this is currently what the vehicle is doing you can also see across the top some additional functions so what the vehicle's done today um, what it's done in previous times and also some tank info over here as well now if we go to more it'll present us with four more options over here so setup we did initially and um, we can also do that again if we wish if anything does change fill up so every time we fill up fuel we can log that and reset it so the system knows when we filled up and our usage like costs and um, liters per hundred and things like that um, yes now if we go to about it'll give us the information of the scan gauge as it currently is so the current version that's on there um, and if there's any updates we can do that through the Wi-Fi update if we go back and go into X gauge we've got three options we can do a manual entry we can do an auto scan and we can do a view list so if I go manual entry you'll see that there's nothing already configured on this if I go auto scan now I've got a number of vehicles I can choose from and unfortunately Isuzu is not there but it hasn't stopped it from actually pulling up the right data so it's not to worry um, so I'll just go back but if you do have a vehicle that is on this list by all means click on it and um, you'll get your unique codes as well come up and view list so at the moment there's no um, X gauge commands that have been entered so we'll just go back so we can do a manual entry there but from what I saw before with the coolant one temp and the exhaust gas temperatures and um, the scan gauge has already picked up those unique things about this vehicle now for comparison purposes I've just quickly plugged in the scan gauge to the exact same cable and you'll see that the values are very similar to what I was getting on the scan gauge 3 obviously the engines a little bit hotter probably the exhaust gas temperatures as well um, let's give the engine a little bit of a increase in speed see our EGTs go up and so forth now that we've gone through some of the major functions of this scan gauge 3 product we're going to go back to the home screen and we're going to use this scan function now I'm going to disconnect one of the engine sensors and that's going to trigger the engine lights come on now with that engine light coming on there's a diagnostic trouble code associated with it now the scan gauge should be able to pick that up and tell us what's actually happened with the engine So now with our sensor disconnected, which was relating to the airflow, I'm just going to go into scan, and it's done an active scan, so you'll see that there. And P0102, it's actually got two errors that have come up, and the engine light is on, which we confirm from the dash side. So we've got an airflow sensor circuit low, so it's disconnected, and the intake air temperature as well. Now I can clear it but it's not going to actually resolve the issue so firstly we have to resolve the issue so reconnect our sensor and then that'll allow us to clear the code and we can confirm um, using the dash light and also with the scan gauge whether that's actually true now even with our sensor connected you'll see that our engine light is still on so we'll be able to confirm with the scan gauge if that code is still active and if not, then we'll be able to clear it and that engine light will come off. So that's cleared the code. We'll just make sure that there's nothing pending and that's come back all clear, which it has. 
so that's excellent and that engine light has now turned off because we've cleared it with the scan gauge unit we're just going to take the vehicle for a drive and monitor our engine vitals So that's my initial review of the Scan Gauge 3 product. And if you'd like to see any further videos of the Scan Gauge 3, let me know in the comments below. Now I hope you found this video informative. Don't forget to like it, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and hit that bell notification icon. Thanks for watching.